Hello Lara friends, here's what's new in your favorite PHP framework, let's go! First we have a new attribute for you to use. I'm here inside this process podcast shop and receiving here one podcast. So this means whenever we create this instance, we also get an instance of this podcast directly from the database. But what happens now if this podcast is not given anymore? Think about maybe another job before was deleting this kind of model, this podcast model, and now we don't find it anymore. Now this job would throw a not found exception for this model. So what we already could do in this case is use a specific public property called delete when missing models true, I believe. It's like that. Yeah, so the problem that you can already see is that we don't have any auto-completion here for this property and also PHP Storm tells me what is this property. Um, but yeah, it's working and what this does is now when this throws a 404 model not found exception here that it just deletes this job which could be pretty useful in your use case. But yeah, we got a new way to do this. Instead of using this public property, what we can do is we can use a PHP attribute on the class itself. And now we have auto completion here for this attribute delete when missing models. And now this does the same, but this is a way nicer way to trigger this feature. Thank you, Noel. Then we have another update on the new context help by Laravel. I'm here inside Tinkerwell and I'm using here the new context feature of Laravel where I'm adding something to the current context and I'm saving here local is German, so D and E. And then if I want to get this local here, I can just use context, get and just give me the local and I'm not interested in a default. All right. You can see and now at the end, if we now check again what we have in our context by using the all method, you can see we still have our local in there. But something that you can already do with collections or with sessions is use a different method Instead of get, it's the pull method, which we can now also use with the context. And if we now try this out again, we can see now it's empty. So this means we're pulling out the local value from the context. We still have it here and we can use it, but it's not inside the context anymore. So this is now a new pull method for the context feature so that we have a little bit more of consistency here within our features. Thank you, Renee. Another little improvement was added to sessions. So here another example I have here in Tinkerwell, we are pushing something to a session. First name is Christoph. And if we see what we have here, fair enough, we should see that I am in the session. All right. So if we want to check now if we have a specific key, a specific value in the session, we have this has method. So session has first name, so that's the key. This should be true, and it is. But let's say we not only have the first name, maybe we have a username or something else, and we want to check if there is the first name or the username. So then we could do something like this. Also check now for username, and this should be true as well. But of course, this is a little bit messy to write. So we have something new for you that you can use, which is just has any. So this receives an array and now we can provide all the keys that we want to check here. First name, maybe also username. And of course this is true as well, but this is now a nicer way to write this with this new has any method for sessions. Thank you, Mamo Ramadan. And last, there is another handy little helper when using the strict mode for a model. So we do have here one user in this example, which is just me from the database, the first one. And we want to make sure that we can check if a specific property on my user exists. So if we just try to call one, which I don't have, like info here, for example, we get null back. So basically we could just check if this is not null like this and it's false because it is null. So this way we could check if a specific property exists. And if I use one which does exist like name, it would be true. So let's change this back to info. But the problem here is now, if we're using strict mode for this model, I'm here in my service provider and I'm bringing in this code here where I'm saying we want to use the user model in a strict mode. So if I run this now again, this is going to fail now. So this is an exception being thrown. The attribute info either does not exist 
or was not retrieved from the model. All right, so this is now not working anymore because we don't allow any calls here to properties that do not exist. So something else that we could check here now is let's say we can do array key exists. And here we are now providing the key, which is info. And the second argument would be user get attributes. So all available attributes for a specific model you can find inside the get attributes method. So this is what this method returns. And this is why this is false. And again, if I change this to name, this would be true. But again, let's change it back now to info. And here in my user model, I am now bringing this now in. So I'm creating this new kind of virtual accessor for my model where I'm saying now this is now a new property called info. And I'm returning here the name and the email of the user. So you can see if I do now user info, I do get my name and my email back. But again, if we just call this call here it will be false and the reason is that those accessors here like the one which we just created are not part of the get attributes method so this is not being returned which of course is an issue so what is the best way now to check if a property exists in a safe mode also when the strict mode is on there is now a new method that you can use which is called has attribute now we call info this is true let's call name this is also true and let's call something else. This is now false because this does not exist. So whenever you have to check if a specific property on your models exists, this is now the new method that you should use because it also takes into account if you have any accessors that are not in the get attributes method or not in the attributes array. Thank you, Mateusz. What addition do you like the most about this week's release? Let me know in the comments and see you the next time. Bye.